Hey everybody, I'm Keychain. Um, <clears throat> today I am doing a quick video about a new game I've been playing called The Ants Underground Kingdom. Now, before we get into anything, <clears throat> since some of you may try this game, um, if you're in a region with the Amazon App Store, it's on the Amazon App Store. Don't even bother with the Google version. Um, you know, just skip Google, go straight to the Amazon App Store, download it from there, and it's going to save you money. If you do like this game, you do decide to spend on this game. Um, I've been playing it for, I don't know, like a week, and <laughs> I really like it so far. Um, there's a lot of really unique features to this game, and I'm going to be doing some videos on, you know, Beginner's Guide and, and that type of stuff, and <clears throat> some of the systems in the game, but I don't know enough yet. I'm I'm still mapping that out to figure out what it looks like because although, you know, I do want to do videos and I want to get people involved and, and get them in on the game, I don't want to give bad information that I have to then go back and, and either apologize for or fix later, if that makes sense. So I'm trying to, you know, learn quickly and, and do what I can. Reset just happened, um, so we get our VIP uh, points and get our VIP check-in for the day. I don't know how high this goes as far as the VIP credit and how high it increases. Uh, in other games I played, it caps at 500. This one is already at 600. Um, there are 15 levels of VIP in this game, but it's not game-breaking. At, at least from what I can see, nothing in here is so game breaking that it's like oh if you don't have vip 12 like you might as well not play you know it's everything seems like nice bonuses but not like oh my god you know this combat speed seems like that one would make a difference between the different vip levels but other than that it's things that'll help you that aren't totally game breaking um so in this game you increase your queen is your main ant hill slash stronghold piece uh, as your queen level. So queen level 13 is where I'm at right now. And that's kind of how you unlock more features is increasing your queen, doing that type stuff. Uh, and for anybody that does want to try this game out, um, I am in kingdom 552 or state 552. The alliance is YTF, YouTube family, Keychain Gaming. Um, come join, check it out. If you are joining, please change your name away from the generic ruler number, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then, you know, if you try it, you don't like it. No, there's, you know, you don't have to play it. If, if you try it and you do like it, come join, you know, my server. Um, one thing about this game is when you start... You don't get to pick your server. Um, you have three days to get to at least Ant Hill level five. Um, and when you're in between Ant level five and Ant level Ant Hill level 14, and you're under 72 hours of your new account creation, you can migrate to any kingdom in the game using your newbie teleport. And I still have one, so I'll show that real quick. Uh, even though I can't use it, your newbie teleport is this green one. It looks like this. So when you use that, uh, say I wanted to try and go here. Here's the criteria. So what I was saying, you have to be at least, queen level must be 5, at least 5, and lower than 14. You can't have any marches out. It says you haven't joined any alliance. That's misworded a little bit. If you've joined an alliance for the first day or two, you can leave the alliance to then migrate. I tested that myself. Uh, so it doesn't mean you can't you don't you can't you know join an alliance for the first day and just kind of try it out. Um, if you know if you like the kingdom that you land in, that's fine too. You don't have to come join me. Just you know send a shout out your in-game name and your kingdom, and you know maybe at some point in the future we'll face each other. I don't even know how the events work in this game yet. All right, yet. Um, let me get into a couple of the features and the things I really like about this game uh, before I lose everybody from, you know, too much rambling. One of the things I really like 
is there are seven types of resources, which might seem overwhelming, but it's it's really neat. So you've got larva that help feed your ants and your the not larva the wood louse colony. So these wood louse, you're basically breeding them as food. Um, you've got these springs that you can collect water, and the other thing, look at these ants doing work. They're running over here. They're carrying leaves. They're carrying food. They're bringing stuff back to the queen. Like they're bringing stuff over here to the um, the storage depots where I'm holding extra stuff. Like they're just they're hoarding stuff. You've also got sand. Uh, you've got leaves. You've got fungus. Now the way you get fungus is these leaf cutters that are here. And I don't know if you can kind of zoom in that. You see these leaf cutters are creating fungus. Basically they chopping up the leaves to create these these fungus spores which is the fourth resource to get that you have to supply it with leaves so if i was going to supply this i would send supply and it'll take up one of my worker ants for a minute but i would supply these resources uh, and it's going to go and supply those and then it slowly converts those leaves into fungus throughout the day which i, I mean it's another cool thing um We've also got wet soil, so you need wet soil for stuff. So you've got these wet soil piles that you can, you know, these are your resource nodes, and you can level them up to provide more soil. Uh, covered sand, and then we've got the, the most valuable resource. The thing that you need a lot of <clears throat> is honeydew, which is produced by these aphids. So the aphids produce honeydew, which is the seventh resource, and you need that for a lot of stuff. So... Kind of equivalent to silver or gold in some other games. Um, you need a lot of this, and it's very valuable. So oh, I'm going to start a research too. Here's the research tree. Um, I haven't unlocked it all. It gets farther and farther. But the thing that I've been working towards, and I need to save up a little bit more resources, is this one here. Um, gosh, I might, I might have enough resources saved up to do this. I think I do. So I'm going to do this one live right now because this is one that I've been working on and it can segue into something else. Oh, no. Okay, so I screwed something up. I don't, I can't do this yet because I need to increase my leaf um, deposit or my depot to be able to hold more stuff. So I need to do this real quick. Um and I'm going to speed this up. We're going to we're going to speed it up real quick. And now I can probably do that research that I was after. And I'll show you what this secondary leadership is and why we need it. Um, because it makes it so you can have more more ants, um, special ants, which are guards. You can have those inside of your um, your main march to get a secondary leadership spot. There's a lot to it. I'm gonna I'm gonna break all this down. We're gonna go through it. Um, what else? Immersion. The thing that I like about this. Look, we're underground, right? Everything I'm doing is underground. When you start off, you start off with a much smaller area, and you unlock things each level. So after we unlock, um, let me unlock this right here for you guys, and I'm gonna show you what happens after we've unlocked it. So I unlock this. And then I have to dig this away with ants to kind of piece away these these bricks to find stuff and see what's revealed in this new area. And they'll give you some little bonus rewards. Like we just got some honeydew. Um, and we just keep chipping away at this. And sometimes there's larger things in here um, that will then allow you to build more things or have more resources, that type of stuff. Uh, sometimes it's just extra space. Um, and then if you want to leave some of these walls up, some people do that. Like they'll have a building over here tucked away inside of, you know, this other stuff. So it's like, oh, I'm going to put, you know, a special evolution building tucked away over here. You don't have to dig through this other area. You can if you want to, um, but you could cut a little path through and just leave stuff up. So you can kind of design your, um, your anthill underneath to, you know, have little things. Uh, for me, <clears throat> I'm a wide open spaces kind of guy. I unlock all of the area so that it's just, you know, even though I don't have anything up here, I've got the space for when I do need it. Okay, what else? Um, 
other cool things here, like you've got your healing pool here for the ants. You've got these special buildings. Um, new mutation flora is like where a lot of your, like, I guess you'd call it your gear would be your cell, your gene, your germ, and your fungus all in one building. But it's like you equip your cells and you level them up and you star them up and that gets you stats. So like if I was going to enhance this, I don't have any materials, but see, it would give me, you know, an extra 1% for my guardian ants, my shooters would get a little bit of health, and my carrier ants would get a little bit of attack. So that's the kind of, you know, stuff. I haven't unlocked genes yet. I can't do germs, et cetera, et cetera. But those are kind of your your gear, the things that you're going to be focusing on to get stronger. Alongside research, alongside special ants. Um, quickly, I want to show special ants. So... Because it's reset, I get a free hatch. You get a free supreme hatch. So I get one of these. I'm going to hatch this. Looks like I got a blue ant. Um, Northern sugar ant. I don't know if I've had this one before. But see up here how it's melee, it's guardian, and it's carrier. So uh, basically what that means is it's a good melee ant, and he's good at leading guardian ants, and he's good at leading carrier ants. And then there's each ant has... Like blue, I think have four abilities. Purple have six or eight, and gold ants have eight. Um, and as you level them up, you have to get a certain level ant, you know, and unlock it. But there's a lot of different customization stuff you can do with these. Um, so many different ants. The other thing that's cool is every ant in this game is a legitimate type of different ant. So it's like it's immersive. Like, I think it's cool that, you know, all the special ants and all the different types are actually ants that you can, you know, look up and Google and see what they are and what they do. Um, look at all these different types of gold ants. There's so many. Um, and they just have different things. I have no idea which ones are amazing yet, um, which ones are not. Like, oh, we'll find that as we go. Um, the other thing is cool is, each of your ant tiers for your soldiers are different types of ants. So looking at this, right, down here my tier ones are this, you know, it uses the scientific name, the, oh, how do you even say that? Camponatoa subab, yeah, I, I'm not going to try and say these, but they're different types of ants. They're real ants, and that's your different tiers. Um, and, you know, each one, of course, has different levels of attack, defense, health, power, how much they consume, you know, etc. So that's, you know, another cool thing. And I, I really like this game so far. Um, this is a new feature that just came out, this ornament center. No idea what I'm doing here. But apparently you can unlock these somehow. Um, so I, you can redeem these different types of decorations um, for, for the inside of your anthill, but they actually have bonuses. So looking at this, there's a limit to how much you can occupy, but an example here is if you wanted to increase your so soil gathering, you place these little you know, palm tree looking things, whereas if you wanted to increase your resource gathering, you would put these star leaves down. If you wanted to increase all resource gathering speed, you'd put down this sweet greasy. Um, if you wanted to increase the meat output of your, um, God, what, did, what do we call them? I forgot what they're called already. The uh, wood louse colonies. You would put down those other decorations. So small bonuses, but they all kind of add up. Um, just tons and tons of little things in here that are fun. Um, oh, every day at reset, the ladybug visits that you can trade resources for. Um, I think that's kind of fun too. Uh, some of these, I don't know which ones are good value, but I do like to trade. Anytime I can trade water for another resource or I can trade to get sand, I do that because I'm always low on sand uh, and I always trade to get honeydew. No matter what the resource is, honeydew seems to be the hardest to get one. So I always trade for that. And then I always trade water for whatever other resource because I always have excess water right now. Um, but yeah, let's see. Um, I said this was going to be a quick video, but there's so much to show. Uh, I'm going to show a little bit outside real quick. And then 
from there, I'll call it. But out here, there's gathering. Um, you can gather diamonds. Diamonds are the, the premium currency. You can gather diamonds. So, you know, if you set up to go and gather on three or four diamonds overnight, um, you could wake up with some extra and grind that way. Resource tiles. Level 7 resource tiles have 1.2 million resources. Fantastic. My gathering rate is absolutely terrible right now. But inside the forest, the quote-unquote forest if you're from another game, 1.6 million on the level 8 tiles. And looking at the kingdom map, whoops, moved out of the way, um, is the tree. So in the middle of all of this is the tree. And this is the uh, like the goal, the kingdom, the thing that we're after is to control this. Um, and I'm guessing that these are the towers. These, <laughs> they're called squirters. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're not going to visit that subject right now. If you guys know what I'm talking about, if your mind went to the gutter, I apologize. Uh, but yeah, and then it's still decorated for Christmas. So these are the special Christmas decorations. Um, I don't know if it's like this all year round or not I'm guessing I mean this looks like a Christmas tree I don't know what the tree looks like normally but the other cool thing about this um, that I like about this is when you're killing monsters see these little resource symbols next to each one when you kill these monsters they give that type of resource okay so if you're short on resources you can actually go out and kill monsters and it's not just arbitrary like oh I'm gonna kill monsters because I have to burn my stam and it gives something that I don't really need the ants that are leading your marches gain experience for killing the monster. You gain resources for killing the monster, and sometimes it gives you um, materials that you need to upgrade. So right now I'm, I have no sand. So I'm going to go and attack this with my pro units. So I'm going to send this march out, and then I'm going to send my other march to kill a level 7 because it's not quite as strong. So we're going to send that one out. Now the one thing that is kind of, let's see, a bummer or it's a downside right now and I, I don't know how much faster it gets. Look at how long it takes for my unit to march. Six minutes, all right? But stamina regenerates slowly, so this is kind of a long-term grind type thing is I send my units out to kill some stuff and then I do other things. Um, but yeah, when you're actually killing stuff, there's also everything on the map that you're actually killing is different types of, you know, like real things like you kill snails for this wet ground and then it changes to longhorn beetles then hermit crabs and that's the highest it goes for this one it's locust and then it changes to rove beetle and then it changes to giant mantis like i love the immersion and how far they've gone into like making this a little ant world um i i just i think it's really really fun so far and i'm enjoying this game uh, and I'm going to be playing it for a couple of months at least. So, you know, try it. If, uh, it, you know, if you're tired of your current strategy game, give this one a shot. Um, it's different, right? And I don't know how things compare to some other games, but I have found that I can do everything I want to without spending, but I want to spend. So this is one of those dangerous games where... I don't spend because I feel like I have to. I spend because I want to, which is worse, right? Because when I dread spending, when I feel like I have to spend to keep up, it's like, oh, I'm tired of doing it. But when I want to spend because I'm having fun, that's more dangerous, much more dangerous. And I will show you something, how dangerous it is. They keep pack records here. I'm going to show you this. Don't judge me, all right? I'm going to wail out on this game. Here's my pack record. So it keeps track of everything I've bought so far. So I've bought this Ant Hill level limited $5 pack, this resource ladder pack, um, the exclusive VIP pack, resource ladder, worker ant. Like these are the things that, you know, I've, <laughs> I've already spent like $25 on this game. So, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's really fun. So, ooh, what is this? Planet gift has ended please claim the valuable rewards okay looks good i will claim that um let's see i think that might be it where i'm going to show in this video um oh almost 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 one more thing you can get 
all the way up to eight builder ants in this game. So you have to buy them to get them sooner. And I don't know how many you get for free total, but like this one, if I buy this, instead of having to get to queen level 16, if I spend 20 bucks, I get this now. Um, I don't know which of these you have to buy to get. Like, I don't know what the number is to get without spending it all. Like if you get four or five or six free, but you can go all the way up to eight. And having eight builders makes it so that you can, uh, you know, you can level up resource buildings while at the same time leveling up, you know, your combat buildings and other things that you, you know, you need for combat. So I like that too, because in some of these other games, they give you one and then you have to buy a pack to get a second. And it's like everything is slow and you have to use hundreds of speed ups to ever get anywhere. Well, if you have six or eight builders, even if things take a while, you can just, you know, let them do their thing. And it's like, oh, you only need to speed up one or two things if you if you need to get somewhere quickly. But other than that, it's like, yeah, I've got my six buildings going. They all take an hour each. Who cares? Oh, and the other thing that happened here. Because I upgraded the leaves to level 10, that's the highest that building goes. But now I get a second one. So I get a second plant depot. Um, oh, let me show you something else. When I, let me, last thing, last thing I swear. Um, when I unlock something, you have to have tunnels to get to things. So if I wanted to put this up here in the corner, I put it there. But the ants have to be able to get to it. And they get to it through these little tunnels. So I have to form those tunnels for it to be able to get to this building, to, to be able to build it. So now that I can I can put this building up, you'll see that it's got these little tunnels that run up to it, which is another, like, that's a small thing, but it's, again, it's fun. Like, see, now the tunnel is there, so they can get to it to put the leaves in the pile, right? So, okay, I think that's it for this video. Um, again, uh, last a reminder one more time. State number 552 YTF. All right. If you want to come join, the alliance requirements are this. The power requirement is just kind of arbitrary. If you're coming from YouTube, just tell me in the in the request, you can type a message, say, I'm here from YouTube. Say your name, you know, whatever it is. I don't care if you've got 4,000 power in your, in your stronghold level five. If you tell me you're from YouTube, I'm going to accept you. All right. We've got 38 more spots right now um you know come join have some fun we'll figure it out if you go offline for more than two days and you haven't let me know i'm gonna kick you but you can always rejoin i just uh i'm i'm very strict on activity you know it's like come try the game but actually you know play it once a day at least otherwise what's what's the point of having it you know okay that's really it this time. I'm not going to ramble on. Um, thank you for watching. Remember to hit the like, subscribe. Um, I will be playing this game. I'm not going back to any of my old games, unfortunately. So, you know, sorry for those that are hanging on to the hope that I might one day go back to one of those other games. I'm not going to mention that game. You all know which one I'm talking about. But uh, I'm going to be playing this one for a little while. I play another game called Seven Nights. Uh, and then I'm going to be playing Lost Ark when it comes out. So lots of games to be playing. I'm also going to be playing Diablo Immortal, Diablo 4. Um, probably looking at, um, oh, what's the one? Ashes of Creation. Like there's a lot of games coming out in the future that I'm excited for that I'm going to be playing. Might be making content for, you know, it's just I'm, I'm trying to do content for games that I enjoy and that I have fun playing rather than strictly for contract and for money and that type of stuff. Now, it's a bonus if I can get a contract for a game that I want to play, but that's not always going to happen. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to avoid playing new games strictly because someone else wants me to uh, moving forward. So, okay, I'm done rambling. Thanks for watching again. And I'll see you in the next video.